Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Todd Clint's SharePoint Netcast number 157, recorded live on Monday, March 13th, 2013. I am Todd Clint, your host and People Magazine's, um, voted People Magazine's most beautiful man. I did not see that coming. Uh, they're too kind. They didn't have to do that. Uh, but that's uh, that's the, the word that I'm hearing, that I am uh, uh, People Magazine's most beautiful man this year. Good luck to, you know, Channing Tatum and all those other guys next year. I don't know. I just, uh, I just got it this year. I don't know what it is. But uh, one thing I also have is I have outstanding hosting from the folks at Rackspace. The folks at Rackspace, not only do they uh, pay pay my bills, you know, keep the lights on and the internet connection going and all that, but they also host these files. If you've downloaded this file, it's downloaded from a Rackspace server. And uh, they do a great job. It's fast. It's good. None of the bits get lost. And if you need good, uh, good hosting, go to Rackspace.com. If you want to find out about what we can do for you for your SharePoint environments, go to Rackspace.com slash SharePoint and, uh, and tell them that Todd sent you and you'll get, uh, you'll get some great SharePoint hosting from the fine folks at Rackspace. And remember, uh, every time you buy hosting from Rackspace, you reduce the chances that I'll get fired. So I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but uh, you got that going for you. Folks at Rackspace also gave me this fine Rackspace cup because it would be silly for, I guess, anybody else to give me a Rackspace cup. But uh, very good. The water tastes better out of my Rackspace cup. I can't explain it. Oh, refreshing Rackspace water. Okay. So the first part of every show is the part of the show where we go through all the things that I did wrong during the last show. And uh, we got a good one uh, this week. So... Last week I had some problems, mostly got everything going, and this is funny. So I got this chat room here, you can't see it, it's in, it's in this monitor, there's a good uh, 30 people or so in the chat room, they're heckling, they're making fun of my clothes, my hair, how I pronounce things, uh, it's, uh, it's a rough crowd. But anyway, when I went to go start uh, broadcasting last week, they said, hey, your audio is really crackly. Now, the way that I normally record this thing, I've got one microphone, it's this fancy uh, blue ye Yeti thing. Uh, fancy microphone and all that and I've got everything using that microphone the streaming the recording all that kind of stuff I also have it uh, going through the, uh, the house you know so everybody in the house can hear me but the folks on the the stream are like hey your uh, your audio sounds really crackly now in my head that meant that Ustream was doing something crazy because uh, because I stream over Ustream so I switched the mic on the recording of the streaming to just one of my webcam mics, just anything, any crap to make those guys in the chat room quit complaining. So I switched over to a webcam mic, and uh, and off we went. So what um, when what I didn't think about was um, maybe it wasn't UStream, but like the computer or the microphone. So when I got my recordings done last week, I played them. They all had crackly audio. The one that I did with Audacity had crackly audio. The one that I do with the Logitech stuff had crappy audio, crackly audio. Every one of them had the crackly audio that the chat room was trying to tell me about uh, Monday night. Uh, but the one that didn't have crackly audio was I do, uh, when I stream with Ustream, I always, uh, I start the broadcasting, but I also, there's an option there where I can start a recording and it records the stream up to Ustream. You can't see, I got Ustream on a monitor over there. It records it over to Ustream and then I can, I always make them private so they don't show up, but I've got them there as a backup. Well, thank goodness I did that last week because the Ustream one was the only one that didn't have crackly audio. <sighs> so uh, you, there's an option there to, from Ustream. I can download it. So I downloaded the fat Flash file, the FLV file, did some magic, some video magic, magically turned it into a WMV file, and that's what I published last week. So the video quality is not as good. It's kind of soft, which honestly for me is probably a good thing. Um, but uh, the audio sounds better than the other audio did because it was all popping and crackling. And I tried a bunch of stuff to, to pull the pops and crackles out and, and couldn't, uh, you know, those little guys from uh, the serial. But nothing, uh, nothing would work, so I ended up not being able to use it. <clears throat> but um, so that was, uh, that was the problem with that. Now, the funny thing was that I also uh, had to had the same problem this week. So it has something to do with my USB thing or whatever because when I hooked my mic up I fired up Audacity I did a recording it sounded fine I did a recording on my video it sounds fine as soon as I went live in the chat room they're all like your audio sounds terrible I did uh, 
I did a quick recording and sure enough it's crackling. So it's something to do with the audio, uh, the USB bus or something like that. So I'll look into that for next week. But uh, I apologize, the quality and all that wasn't so great uh, last week and that's because I missed uh, um, you know, missed testing it and all that. So I apologize. And thanks to the folks in the chat room for trying to give me a heads up because you tried to warn me. I just didn't listen to you. Um, and because of all that, because of all the shenanigans with the sound sounding bad and me trying to edit it, me trying to convert it and all that kind of stuff, I, uh, I didn't get everything published out until late. So I don't think I've even got the blog post out yet, but the RSS feeds have been updated. So I do have that. Um, so I apologize for that. I'll try to get this week's out earlier. On a completely unrelated note, or mostly unrelated note, my, as you guys know, and I talk about it all the time, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a SharePoint MVP. The Microsoft has this MVP program, and it's where they, they basically th throw us folks that do things in the community uh, a bone. They, they make us MVPs, and it's for people who are active in like the forums or blog posts or whatever. I've been fortunate enough to be an MVP like seven or eight years in a row. I've kind of forgotten about uh, how long that is. But my MVP renews July 1st. And part of that process is I have to tell them all the things that I've done in the previous year so they don't kick me out. And that's, I'm going through that process now. I submitted the document a couple of days ago. But one of the things that I did was I had to tell them how many downloads I had of this netcast. And so I went onto my web server. I use, you know, SharePoint 2010 is what I'm hosting it on, all my netcast stuff. For the 10 and a half months between now, between May 13th and July 1st of last year, because that's what you've done from July 1st to July 1st, but July 1st, 2013 hasn't come yet. So, excuse me, in 10 and a half months of time, I've had over 85,000 downloads of this netcast. And that's the MP3 version, the WMV version, and the Apple version. So that's pretty crazy. That comes out to a little over, when I did the math, it came out to a little over 8,000 a month, which is about 2,000 a week, which is not too bad. So thanks to everybody that, uh, that's been downloading that. I've been making some changes this year, hopefully trying to make that number a little bigger, but then things like last week happened and my audio goes to poop on me, and uh, and that happens. So in the chat room, uh, Susie is asking, uh, do the, the live viewers count? Of course, the live viewers are the closest ones to my heart, nothing against you people that don't show up live, uh, but you, you live viewers are uh, are the ones that uh, you know mean the most to me. Unfortunately, there's no good way for me to count those. So uh, they don't count towards my MVP thing, though if I don't get renewed, I will give you the name of the person to, uh, you know, you can go march on them with the pitchforks and the the, uh, the burning stakes and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but yeah, so there, I don't have that, that down, the, the, the live room. And also because before I switched to IRC, there was no good way for me to track how many people are in the, uh, the chat room. So, uh, but thanks to everybody. Uh, you know, my mom can only download so many versions of this, so I can only assume that that 80,000 or 85,000 or whatever it was, uh, you know, is mostly legitimate folks. But, but thanks for that. But tell your friends, I appreciate it. And let's, uh, let's get the word out. Okay. On to our topics. The first one is a fun one, and this is one that we have been waiting for for a while, whether we realize it or not, and that is the language packs for SharePoint 2013 server. Now, we've had language packs for SharePoint 2010 for a while, and we've had language packs for SharePoint, Share, uh, SharePoint 2013 foundation for a while, um, but we haven't had the language packs for SharePoint Server 2013 until last week. And these are, uh, you know, if, you, if you've installed SharePoint in your native language, everything shows up in your native language. Since I'm American and since I live in the middle of the country, nobody around me speaks anything but English or American as I affectionately refer to it. And uh, so I don't know any other languages. I've been running uh, SharePoint 2013 in English. Been, uh, been happy as a pig in slop. And in Iowa, there are actually pigs in slop, so I, I know what that's like. But if you wanted to have other uh, languages in, in addition to your installed language, they are now out there. And there are a slug of them. There are 30-some, 40-some, I lost count. But there are languages I've never even heard of in here. Uh, but uh, And you can install those. So be very careful, though, and the folks in the chat room, as soon as I mentioned uh, language packs, everybody started telling their tales of woe. 
about uh, about the language packs. So be very clear about this. Much like uh, you know cumulative updates or anything real in reality, um, don't install a language pack at least in production unless you really need it. So like I said, there are 30 some of these language packs and they're free downloads. So you might be tempted to just download them all and install them. You would laugh, but I know a company that did that. There was uh, 15 or 20 uh, language packs for SharePoint 2010 at one point and they just installed all of them. So it would just all be there and it was horrible for them. Number one, once you install your language pack and turn everything on, then that stuff shows up in the interface. And you know, as much as everybody wants to be worldly and all that, uh, you probably don't need, you know, Vietnamese or Slovak or both versions of Serbian in your SharePoint environment if you're uh, if you're only going to be <laughs> only going to be serving folks that speak English. So you don't want that. The second part about it is every time you install a language pack, you have to run the configuration wizard, which is downtime for that server. And then every time you patch, like service pack wise, so far we haven't had a service pack for SharePoint 2013 yet, but SharePoint 2010 the service packs didn't come with the service packs for the language packs, so you had to do all that. It just makes maintenance really tough. And then when you bring servers into your farm, they have to have all of the language packs and all that kind of stuff. So it gets really ugly when you start uh, installing language packs. So now that these language packs are out for SharePoint 2013, if you're language pack curious, and honestly, aren't we all, by all means download every language that you think your users are going to want to use but put them on a test environment first and just play with how things work. And if you have a test environment that doesn't have like the March 2013 public update or the April 2013 uh, CUs, then go ahead and install one of those on top because the process is really complicated. Well, not really complicated, but it's more complicated than it is without them. And you need to understand all that. So it's just like anything else. Don't install it unless you need it. But if you need them, there are out th they are out there. Uh, so now if you're, uh, you know, like myself, I don't know about you guys, but I've been just clamoring for the Bulgarian language pack, and now it's out. So now I can add uh, the, the language number 1026 to my farm, um, and that's it's out there. So but, but by all means, be careful with the language packs. If you want them, use them, but uh, if not, leave them alone. Uh, and I see we've got a bunch of fans of Bulgarian in here, so that's good, that's good. Um... And folks, we got a bunch of Canadians in the chat room tonight, and that's okay. We like Canadians. Now they're uh, cranking out the French to make me look bad. I think uh, Chris just said something about his leg hurting in French, but I can't. My French is really rusty. I'm uh, I'm not up to speed on that. So here's another fun one uh, that came out this week, and this I, I tell this uh, tell this topic for two reasons. Uh, number one, just because there's some educational stuff, but number two, this gives you all a good chance to laugh at me. And who doesn't like to laugh at me? Everybody likes to laugh at me. So last week I had a coworker who was working on a, a customer server and they wanted to play with uh, adding some words to SharePoint 2013's spell checking, some custom words. Now, I, I, was, I was kind of um, kind of surprised, but a, a bunch of people when I started talking about this um, didn't know that SharePoint had spell checking built in, and it does. So there's a couple of places that you can find it, but the easiest way is if you have a publishing page, when you check the publishing page out and you add things to the publishing page, up in the ribbon up there, there's a spell check button. You hit the spell check button, the spell checks the page, tells you the words that are wrong, all that. So as is often the case with any spell checker anywhere ever, proper nouns and proper names and industry specific terms don't show up correctly. So this customer, working with one of my coworkers, wanted to add a few words to the custom directory or the custom dictionary for SharePoint 2013. And my coworker, being uh, being smart and uh, you know moderately uh, average or a little uh, in, uh, in in attractiveness, goes out there and looks and finds the way to do it in SharePoint 2010, but it doesn't work for SharePoint 2013. So he sends an email out to a couple of us, says, hey, you know, can you hook up, can you, can you take a look at this and help me out? How do we do this for 2013? Now, a bunch of things have changed in SharePoint 2013, so it wasn't completely unreasonable to think that that particular functionality had changed. So I went out, I did some searches. Everything that I found on the web about how to do this was all for SharePoint 2010. And I did find a couple of, like, TechNet articles from July that talked about how you couldn't you could not add custom words to the SharePoint 2013 
uh, custom dictionary. So I assumed, number one, that my coworker had done everything correctly, and I assumed, number two, that it didn't work as it did in 2010 and 2013. The important thing here is that I didn't actually try. I didn't actually try the 2010 uh, thing in 2013. So I sent the thing out on Twitter, and a bunch of people are like, hey, here's how you do it, and they were sending me links to articles I'd found on 2010. So I'm like, hey, these don't work. But then in the background, I was playing with a SharePoint 2013 VM doing some stuff, and I tried the SharePoint 2010 method, and it worked uh, just like it does in 2010. Um, so a couple of lessons there. Number one, if you want to add custom words to the SharePoint uh, spell checker, the same way you do it in 2010 is how you do it in 2013. And I'll go, uh, I'll tell you how to do that in a second. The other thing is don't take anybody else's word for something. If somebody tells you something doesn't work, try it for your damn self. See if it works, because uh, I should have done that, and then I could have uh, could have uh, saved myself some embarrassment. So how do you do the thing? How do you fix the, uh, the add custom works to the SharePoint uh, dictionary? And I'll probably blog this just because there's not a lot out there on SharePoint 2013. Even though it's the same for 2010, I'm going to put something out for 2013. Um, but the first thing that you do is in your site collection, um, your public, uh, for your publishing site, you create a document library called Spelling. And in the Spelling document library, you create a file called custom space dictionary dot text. And in custom space dictionary dot text, in the spelling document library, you uh, put all the words that you don't want it to find uh, is, is misspellings. So in my case, I, I put, uh, when I was testing it out, and I've got all the screenshots for the blog post, I just haven't published it yet. I put like my last name and phrases, all is one word, like Shane sucks, that kind of stuff. Save them in that custom dictionary. And then when you run a spell check on that uh, site collection anywhere it references that uh, that location so again that will be a blog post coming out and again this isn't anything that I figured out I'm not blazing any trails but I just want to get uh, get the, the blog post out there so that when people do a search for 2013 that it shows up but again uh, I should have tested that before uh, before I told my coworker it didn't work um, okay, so another fun thing. We've had some weird patching stuff come up in the last, well, for SharePoint 2013. SharePoint 2013 came out in October of 2012, but we didn't get a patch in December like we thought we would have because it's an even month. We got a patch in March, which is an odd month, but it wasn't a cumulative update. It was a public update, wh whatever that means. And then we got a cumulative update in April that you need the, mar it was all very confusing. So another one of the things um, that we need to figure out is, is these patches took a really long time to install. And part of that had to do with the extraction process. If you tried to slipstream or anything like that, you know that when you slipstream, when you extract that April one, it takes forever. And then it doesn't slipstream. <laughs> Uh, that's no good. So, uh, but in, in, in Netcast 153, I, I posted a blog post from a guy named uh, Russ, and <laughs> he talks about how you can get your patching process for the March C or PU down a little bit. But then just this last week, Bill Bear, uh, one of the program managers or whatever he is for uh, for SharePoint out in Redmond, um, he published a blog post on the March public update, though he posted it in May, and kind of gave some guidelines on how to make things go better for that patch. So he talks about things like making sure you have enough disk space, and he talks about how much you need, and all that kind of stuff. But he also shows a bunch of things you can do to uh, make the patching go better. Things like stopping the timer service, stopping search, uh, stopping the host controller, things like that. And it's pretty much all the stuff that Russ talks about in his blog post uh, that I talked about in, in Netcast, Russ Maxwell, that I talked about in Netcast 153. So if you go to Russ's blog post, he talks about why the patching process takes so long. And again, his thing was written for the March uh, public update. But he has a PowerScript, or excuse me, PowerShell script 
that installs the patch for him. So basically, he drops this PowerShell script and the patch into a directory, runs the PowerShell script, the PowerShell script looks for the patch, and then shuts all the things down that makes patching go fast, installs the patch, and then turns everything back on. So both of those uh, blog posts came out and I was kind of reading through them. Uh, and I liked it, so I actually tried it on a couple of boxes last week, and it works pretty well. The April CU, or yeah, the April CU takes a really long time to install, and so uh, be careful about that. And then in in Russ Maxwell's script, he does some things. He pauses, um, pauses, search, and that for me that took probably 10 minutes for search to pause. So that was uh, that was tough, but it worked pretty well. It was very hands off, and I liked it. So, so take a look at, at Bill uh, Bear's blog post on the things that you can stop, and a look at Russ Maxwell's blog post on what you can do. Um, so, in the chat room, Mark is asking if I know if there's similar guidance for SharePoint 2010. I don't know if there is for SharePoint 2010. I never SharePoint 2010 seemed to patch better. I don't think anything probably would. Um, would probably be broken if you tried that. So, so give that a shot, and uh, and see what uh, what happens. So, all right. But those are both pretty good uh, things that I, uh, you know, I'm all into the patching and all that kind of stuff. So that was interesting stuff. Um, all right, lost my notes. So another thing that. Um, that came up this last week as I was looking through stuff is Microsoft has done a good job with some more like free training kind of things that are out there and I noticed three that uh, that really that I really liked <laughs> and the folks in the chat room are having a blast making fun of my hair I'm gonna start wearing a hat or maybe adjust the camera so you can't see the, the top of my head uh, so Microsoft released three uh, pretty good guides on stuff that you can do. I'm pasting them in the chat room. One of them is on just kind of how to how to build a farm, how to build your your standard three-tier farm, you know, SQL and SharePoint and AD and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of a nice thing, a little ebook. And uh, the other one is how to configure e-discovery, which is, you know, the legal thing where you tag documents and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people are curious about it, but it's kind of, it's got some things to, there's some, some weird pieces that you need to get in place that's just not intuitive, and there, uh, there are things like uh, their e-discovery guide, guide talks about that. So that was some pretty good reading. And then they had a Project 13 one. Project Server 2013, I haven't played with Project much, but we've been getting at Rackspace, we get a lot of people curious about it, I guess. So I mean, even last week, we had somebody say, hey, I'm thinking about moving my stuff to Project Server. What do you think? And uh, so it's becoming a bigger deal. I know, you know, Project Server's, I don't know, it's it's kind of, kind of the real thing now. And so if you don't know a lot about Project Server, you can uh, can download this thing. It tells you how to set it up for on online. So the, uh, the whole Office, 20, or Office uh, 365 thing or on-premises. So there was some good stuff there. Uh, okay, so that, all right, so I had one more thing, um, and this is yeah, kind of a topic, kind of not a, uh, not a self-promotion thing. For the last couple of years, I have done the SharePoint Saturday event in Chicago. Uh, there's a great community down there, got a, a, a bunch of folks from the Chicago SharePoint community in the chat room right now, Doug and Jack, uh, some other folks. And it's a great, uh, a great community down there. I try to go down to Chicago once a year for the, for a SharePoint event or two just to see what's going on down there. This year they're having SharePoint Saturday, but it's June 1st. Uh, so, and you can go to spschicagosuburbs.com to find out about it. This year I was not able to go because on June 1st I'm going to be flying to TechEd in uh, New Orleans. But uh, d don't let the fact that I won't be there keep you from going to SharePoint Saturday Chicago. Matter of fact, it should probably work in its favor that I'm not going to be there taking up a room that could otherwise be used by somebody uh, smarter with better hair uh, and with better hair. But the reason that I bring that up is those guys, it's, it's a good community. I know a bunch of those guys. I would probably be there if I didn't have something else going on, and I just wanted to give them a, a shout uh, a shout out about that. So those guys have that. But that gives me a perfect segue into the uh, shameless self-promotion part of tonight's netcast. 
everybody's favorite part of the snack cast. I know it's mine. So I have to start off with uh, SharePoint 2013 administration. So this little guy flying off the shelves. It's uh, being raved about. Everybody loves it. Oprah's thinking about bringing her book club back. It's, uh, it's just good stuff. And even people that don't like me have said that they like the book. So so that's that's good stuff. If you want to buy this, you can go to Amazon and buy it. You can also go to uh, toddclint.com and you can uh, order a signed copy of this. So last week I held one up and I said, if you order now, you could get the exact book that I'm holding. Somebody did that and I sent that book out to them. They should hopefully be getting that tomorrow or the next day. Um, you can order it. So you, if you go to toddclint.com and go to, there's a blog post about it and all that. And if you order a signed copy of the book, you can own this very one right here. I will autograph the book. I will write things about it in it. It's uh, it's good stuff. So check that out. Thanks to the folks that have uh, got it. If you've got a copy of this book, please go out to Amazon and write us a review. If I sent you a free copy of the book, you're morally obligated to write me a review for Amazon. That's how that works. Uh, but where, where the book shows up on Amazon has a lot to do with how well it sells and, and the, the scoring on Amazon. Amazon is, is like the Walmart of buying books. So every little Amazon uh, review helps. So thank you for that. And since Laura Rogers is in the chat room, I will bring up her book as well. After you buy my book and after you reviewed my book on Amazon and you've soaked it all up, you know, read through it and uh, and learned everything. Then go out and buy Laura's uh, building SharePoint 2013 business uh, building business solutions. Good stuff in here. My book will help you get SharePoint up and going. Her book will allow you to actually use it and make uh, make good use of all that uh, stuff you just set up. And it's got pictures of me uh, hidden in there too. So that's uh, that's good. So buy that. Thanks to Laura for that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so you got the book. So I mentioned before, uh, June 1st, I'm going to be flying to New Orleans. I'm going to be speaking at TechEd North America. I'm doing a day-long session on Sunday. Shane and I are doing a SharePoint 2013 administration session. And then, <laughs> well, well scheduled, uh, I'm doing a session on Sunday. And then an introduction to SharePoint administration session on Thursday the very last day of the conference. So I got a session the first day and the last day and nothing in the middle. So if you're gonna be in uh, Tech Ed New Orleans, by all means, come find me because I've got three days to find stuff to do. Uh, and then I'm going to do my introduction session on the last day, which is a good time for an introduction session, right? Right. Um, but I'll be there at uh, Tech Ed in New Orleans. So, and then at the end of next month, I will be going to Madrid, Spain and doing the same things. And fortunately for those of you that are in Europe and going to Madrid, Spain at the end of June, Shane will not be going. I will have a different sidekick. I need to uh, confirm that all with him, but uh, I'll be doing the same two sessions, hopefully scheduled a little uh, a little better, but uh, we'll be doing those same sessions, so that will be great. And then finally, as the, uh, the conference session winds on and we can't, uh, we can't have a month without a SharePoint conference or two. I'll be going to the uh, SP TechCon in Boston in August, and that's the 11th through the 13th, I think, or something like that. Uh, and I can't remember what sessions I'm going to be doing down there, uh, but I'll be in Boston. Come hang out. We'll have booths and all that kind of stuff. It'll be a great time. So that's really all I had. I don't think my uh, interview on the Moss Show has showed up yet. I can only imagine that Hilton has... Uh, has listened through it and decided that it's not uh, not worthy of being published. Nope, still not out there. Hilton, Hilton, Hilton. I think it's time to start a letter writing campaign to Hilton and uh, and get him to, to put that out there because I think it's going to be uh, going to be good stuff. So, well, everybody, I can't wait to see what the audio sounds like on tonight's recording. It's gonna I'm gonna have a bad voice or it's gonna crackle or uh, or something like that. Uh, but thanks to everybody in the chat room. You guys have been posting a bunch of stuff, uh, and I'll, I'll get in there and answer some questions after this. Um, and as always, you can download this from iTunes. You can download it from the Zoom Marketplace. You can go to my blog, toddclint.com slash netcast. I do this Monday nights, 8.30 Central is when I jump online. And uh, so jump on into the chat room, say hey, and uh, hopefully I'll talk to you next week. But thanks, everybody, and have a good night.